So are you waiting on that second stimulus payment? If so, you are not alone. There have been some glitches that are delaying payments. Welcome to Western Mass News, everyone. It's six. I'm Chris Pisano. And I'm Jordan Jagelinzer. Western Mass News reporter Courtney Zeller is getting answers on what the holdup is and how H&R Block is involved. Ashley Allen has been anxiously awaiting her second stimulus check. Hey, do you We're want supposed to get... Um, 1800. She lost her job this year due to the coronavirus pandemic. So it's just my husband working now. So she could really use the money to catch up on bills. What I'm reading online, a lot of people are going through it, and I'm sure a lot of people are banking on this money for, you know, rent and groceries and everything else that everybody's been struggling with during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. The same for Alan Igabrote. He was supposed to get $600. You know, I kind of took it, uh, paid some bills in advance this week, expecting to check. So now I'm just going to have to tighten up my budget a little bit. Turns out they both used H&R Block for their taxes last season. The stimulus payments were sent to an unknown account. We're learning it's possibly the tax firm's account. Yeah, I checked my uh, 2019 tax paperwork and they put their routing number and an account number on there and it matches up to the last four of the account that it went into so I know that they have it but I haven't received any of it. Well I'm not too happy right now especially when I can't find out what account it went to. I don't understand how my first stimulus check could go to my regular bank account and the second one goes to one that's completely different. We reached out to H&R Block. They tell us the IRS determines where second stimulus payments were sent. And in some cases, money was sent to a different account than the first stimulus payment last spring. We immediately deposited millions of stimulus payments to customers' bank accounts and onto our Emerald prepaid MasterCard yesterday. And all direct deposits are being processed. As of right now, many still haven't received anything. I'm hoping that I... I get my stimulus. You know, I'm hoping that H&R Block figures it out. I'm hoping the IRS figures it out. I'm hoping somebody figures it out. I'm Courtney Zeller reporting for Western Mass News. You can also check online to see the status of your stimulus payment. And we have that information on our free Western Mass News streaming app. The suspect accused of trying to set fire to the Martin Luther King Jr. Presbyterian Church in Springfield has pleaded not guilty. Dushko Volchev is not charged in the December 28th fire that destroyed the building, but is charged with multiple other arson attempts and a spree of property damage to cars. Western Mass News reporter Audrey Russo joins us live in Springfield with new information. Audrey? In court today, two very different pictures were painted of Dushko Volchev. The prosecution say that, says that Volchev was not only living in his car for the past couple of weeks, but also wearing the same clothes every day as he attempted to set fire to the MLK church and also committed property crimes, popping tires against cars. Now, on the other hand, the defense says that Dushko Volchev is wealthy enough to live off of savings from a prior finance career and not work. They say that his involvement in the church incidents is all a case of mistaken identity. The defendant then drove his vehicle to the Wahlburgers on Main Street. He sits there for an hour. Prosecutors here aren't describing the three attempted arson charges Dushko Volchev is facing in connection with fires at the Martin Luther King Jr. Church in Springfield from December 13th and 15th. Western Mass News in the courtroom as they walked through the malicious damages charges he's facing, stemming from car vandalism. Police claim to have caught the main resident committing on camera. Prosecutors say on December 14th, Volchev popped the tires on a Tesla on State Street and later went back to steal the tires and rims. On that same day, they say he popped the tires on a BMW parked in front of Wahlburgers. And on December 27th, they claim Volchev slashed the tires on a rented Dodge Charger. Police say through surveillance video and recordings from the Tesla's cameras, they were able to identify the same man in the same clothes each time, driving a gray car at each reported vandalism. As police investigated the fire set at the MLK Church on December 13th and 15th, the surveillance video there showed this. The defendants on video again, the Chevy Cruises in the area, 
Volchev's defense attorney claims the surveillance video only proves he was in the same area of the fire. He claims the main man plans to return to his home state and isn't a flight risk. He hasn't been working uh, for two years. He's basically just been living off of uh, savings. Prosecutors say Volchev was living in his car in Western Mass when the vandalism and fires were reported. They say his only tie to the Bay State is an ex-girlfriend in Pittsfield with a restraining order against him. Volchev was ordered to be held on $25,000 cash bail, and tonight the mayor of Springfield is responding to that. Mayor Dominic Sarno says in part, quote, a message needs to be sent for the demented actions taken by this individual and any others contemplating these types of hideous and hateful crimes. $25,000, he should be held without bail. Volchev is due back in court on February 5th. Live in Springfield, Audrey Russo for Western Mass News. Governor Charlie Baker made a stop here to Western Mass today to discuss efforts to stop the spread of the coronavirus. He also weighed in on the new strain of the virus most recently detected close by in New York State. Western Mass News reporter Sarah Grinelli spoke with the governor and joins us live now with the very latest. Sarah. Jordan, Chris, that variant is said to be much more contagious than the regular coronavirus that we originally had here in the U.S. And Governor Baker says he's already assuming that that variant is here in Massachusetts. As the new coronavirus variant has now spread to the Northeast, the race is on to get everyone in Massachusetts vaccinated. If you were to talk to most of the states, you know, our view would be sooner the better, right? We Give us, give, us, give us kind of, you know, six weeks worth of what the distribution is going to look like, how many and on what days, and we'll put the infrastructure in place to make sure that we deliver um, as quickly as we possibly can. Health experts say the new variant does not appear to be more deadly, but it does make the coronavirus even more contagious. In fact, health officials say the virus could spread 70 percent faster. The new strain was just detected in Saratoga Springs, New York, and previously in Colorado, California, and Florida. Western Mass News asked the governor, what about Massachusetts? Most of us are working on the assumption that it's here. I mean, there'd be no reason not to, um, given the contagious nature of, of, of this new variant. The good news is experts believe the vaccines will still be able to fight the virus. This as thousands of frontline health care workers have already gotten their first doses and soon many first responders too. It's deemed to be absolutely treatable by the vaccines that have currently been approved by the by the feds um, is its contagiousness. I mean, COVID was contagious to begin with. The new variant is considered to be far more contagious. So first responders in the state will be able to get their coronavirus vaccine on Monday. As for West Springfield, they've already started vaccinating their fire department and police department. Live in Springfield, I'm Sarah Gurnelli for Western Mass News. Sarah, thanks for that live report. Turning now to the latest coronavirus numbers in our state over the last two weeks. No data reported on Christmas or New Year's Day, which is why there's gaps there on your screen. Today, the Mass Department of Public Health reporting more than 4,000 new cases of COVID-19. That brings the total number of confirmed cases in the Bay State to more than 379,000. Of them, 79,000 of those still believed to be active. The state also seeing 63 new deaths. The statewide death toll stands at 12,464. Temperatures this afternoon did manage to hit lower 40s throughout the Pioneer Valley, a little bit chillier in the hill towns, but seasonable for today, or at least seasonably mild, actually. Typical high temperatures for early January tend to be in the lower 30s. Right now we're down to about 35 degrees as we look out from our Six Flags sky camp. The park lit up very nicely there. Breezes are a little bit lighter compared to a few hours ago, but we do still have a bit of a wind chill tonight. As we take a look at temperatures all across Western Mass, everybody is now getting a little bit closer to freezing. A lot of uniform temperatures tonight because of the overcast. 
fast and we should keep those clouds through at least half the night before we start to see them break up a little bit. Wind at about 5 to 10 miles an hour out of the north and northwest. So again, we are feeling a bit of a wind chill. Wind chills have dipped into the 20s throughout the Berkshires tonight. So yes, bundle up if you are headed out. We do have some scattered to patchy cloud cover right now and there's still a chance for a couple of flurries, especially what looks like Franklin County right now. And this is basically ocean effect kind of drifting westward, but we're not expecting much. If you see any flakes at all, they're going to be short lived overnight. Some patchy clouds will gradually begin to diminish temperatures in the mid to upper 20s and tomorrow morning will start the day off partly cloudy temperatures getting back to near 40 again by the afternoon. We'll take a look at the rest of the forecast in just a few minutes. Back to you. Jenna, thanks. The Holyoke St. Patrick's Parade postponed for a second straight year. That means the 2020 Grand Colleen and the court will have to wait another year to ride the float through the city. Maura McDermott was originally selected Grand Colleen for the 2020 Holyoke St. Patrick's Parade, an event she's watched for years. But McDermott understands why she now has to wait yet another year to wave to the crowds. I think I speak for um, everyone in the court as well when I say we're very disappointed to hear that we couldn't do it this year, but we kind of expected it given what's um, the state of the world right now. A spokesperson for the Holyoke St. Patrick's Parade Committee tells Western Mass News rules for the Grand Colleen and court will be suspended. This will allow those selected in 2020 to be the ones on the float in 2022. New at 6, the governor stopping by the Springfield Innovation Center earlier today to announce three new programs to boost Internet connectivity statewide, including one to provide access for those who remain unemployed during the pandemic. Mass Internet Connect will provide Internet access and accessible devices to those looking for work through Mass Hire. Providing this free Internet service will obviously help people seeking employment to more easily find new opportunities for work. And to get the program off the ground quickly, we've partnered with several providers to establish a program and to distribute devices like laptops or Chromebooks to people who don't have one. The program will run through June 30th, with the state covering the cost of the service and devices for job seekers.